Hi, Editing Joe Cat here. Before the video begins, I'd like to thank and also recommend a few videos from a couple of really good channels, both of which heavily inspired the panel. First, Alex Mukala and his videos about the leitmotifs of Final Fantasy XIV, as I basically stole half of the video's content for this panel. If you like what I'm going to talk about and want to see more of XIV's repeated musical motifs, his videos are great for that, and he understands music way better than I do. And secondly, Sideways, a channel all about music theory, and where I learned about most of the stuff I'm going to repeat in the panel. His videos are great and go into more detail about how music is used in media, the stories they tell, and the emotions they can trick you into having. Anyway, enjoy me being less articulate. <laughs> Final people coming right on time. All right. Uh, welcome to ACOM. Uh, it's nice here in Texas. <laughs> I stole that joke from Flight of the Concords. Uh, but welcome to the panel. How Final Fantasy XIV tells stories through its music. I do want to warn you. This is going to spoil everything. I'm not going to tell the entire story of the game, but you might as well know the entire story of the game with how much I'm going to spoil here. Uh, anyone here plays 14? Yeah! yeah. Oh. Why am I even... You already probably know all this already. But um, anyone who doesn't play 14, maybe this might convince you. But uh, if you do plan on playing it and don't want to be spoiled, might be the time to check out. You won't make me upset. I mean, I will be a little bit upset, but not at you, because I understand. That's just my insecurities. Uh, but yes, this is going to be about how Final Fantasy XIV tells stories through its music, because its music is amazing, not only because it sounds good, which it does, uh, but also just how it's being used. So, how does it do this? It does this through the repeated light motifs. Backing lyrics and recompositions. And a lot of times when the uh, light motifs show up, they are recompositions as well. If there's any music majors in here, just pretend I didn't say that. But um, yeah, those are the three main ways I believe uh, it does it. And some of them kind of overlap. And maybe there's a few more ways, but I just like to categorize them into these three. So if you don't know, what is a light motif? According to Google, a light motif is a recurrent theme throughout a musical or literary composition associated with a particular person, idea, or situation. This is not to be confused with a theme, because a theme can be abstract and not represent anything. It can represent the entire intellectual property as a whole, like the Star Wars theme. The da -da 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 -da. That's not to any particular character. It kind of represents the whole thing. Uh, whereas a leitmotif has to represent something more abstract, like a singular character, uh, a singular idea, maybe a faction of characters. And here is going to be an example to train your ear. This theme will play. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? It should. <laughs> if you've ever touched a video game before, it is the same theme that plays at the beginning of the first Final Fantasy game. It's called the Prelude. It's the same theme. But that's not actually why this theme is actually important, actually. <laughs> it is important and relevant not because it's the theme of the Final Fantasy franchise, which does make it important, but it's repeated in 14 itself multiple times everywhere. Uh, Alex Mukala, who uh, also is a musical person, he's a composer, he actually works in the industry, made a joke that if you made a drinking game of how many times you hear this theme in 14, you will have to go to the hospital. Uh, you hear it whenever you are fighting, actually no, before you even fight anything, you hear it in just about every single main menu theme for every single expansion, including Heaven's Word. It plays in the Stormblood menu. It plays in the dungeon mini-boss theme, whenever you're fighting a mini-boss in a dungeon. It 
plays when you fight the final boss of the dungeon. Alize just walked in. Everyone, cheer for Alize. The better twin. And then, uh, no, it's okay. My, my brain says that, but my soul says Alphano. Um, it plays during the final boss theme of the dungeon. It is everywhere in the game. But I did say light motifs have meaning, and what does this one mean? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> You've been bamboozled. This, is, this doesn't actually mean anything. It doesn't have anything sort of attachment. It's just sort of a theme of the Final Fantasy franchise as a whole, so they feel the need to kind of put it to remind you, hey, this is a Final Fantasy game. But what is a light motif? Uh, I just kind of wanted to train your ear to hear the same thing over and over again. Uh, what is a light motif that is used to represent something is this. It plays whenever you are in the dungeon Keeper of the Lake, where you fight a big old dragon named Midgard Armor, and you hear this during his introduction. So, Midgard Swarmer, if you don't know who he is, or you forgot because this game is 5,000 hours long, is a big <laughs> dragon dad. Uh, he's the dad of all dragons. He's got a family called the First Brood. It consists of, I think, seven dragons, children that he brought to the world and all that stuff. And he's basically the father of all dragons. So whenever someone of the First Brood shows up, you hear this theme again. You hear it during your trial with Horace Velger, whenever he's training you. Heaven's work when Nid, uh, Estinian transforms into Nidhogg. And you think, oh, it's just a Heaven's work theme, right? It's like it's just in Heaven's work because it's all about dragons. No, in Endwalker, the last expansion of the game so far. You meet the youngest of the first brood, Vritra, and they play it again. Eight years after Heaven's Word came out. After he's revealed to be the real satrap. And so even before they reveal him, even before they lift the curtain, you're like, it's somebody of the first brood. So whenever you hear that choir going, ooh, it's like, oh, it's a child of Midgard Stormer. So yeah, uh, that's light motifs. Uh, here's another one. Let's talk about the Warrior of Light. This is Dirk Lander. He represents the player character. Uh, he is a straight white man. And uh, <laughs> although half the fandom would uh, like to disagree with that first part, uh, with how many people they ship him with. But you have a theme as well. You, the player, that's right. They made a theme song for you. It plays kind of firstly, most prominently, at the end of A Realm Reborn, whenever you're fighting the Ultima Weapon, who's kind of like the final boss fight. purposes, at the point of the story that it's introduced, is kind of an Allegan creation. And some of you who play the game are like, that's not actually, it's more complicated than that. 
I'm just trying to make it as simple as possible. So just, this was made, it's just a robot made by the Allegans whose purpose is to get strong and kill gods. So sometime during the Stormblood raids, uh, this thing, this robot spider guy, is like, I want to learn how you, Warrior of Light, are so strong. I'm going to collect data and put you in a tournament arc where you fight simulations of a bunch of other strong guys from the Final Fantasy franchise and basically do a bunch of fan service. But basically, he's trying to figure out what makes you so strong other than plot armor. Like, something must be making the Warrior of Light so strong and I can't figure it out. So what does Omega do? Omega imitates the Warrior of Light. It becomes an abstraction and this hot anime version of the Warrior of Light. And it's like, all right, I'm going to fight you in your shoes to figure out why you are so strong. And then when you finally fight Omega in this form, you hear this. It's your theme. He stole your look. He stole your moves, and he stole your theme song. But it really goes to show that this is the player character's theme. And this is my very favorite version of the theme, too. So I think. And just so, yeah, so it's like, it's kind of like you're fighting yourself. So Omega is imitating you, so it's like, you know, you can't even trust yourself nowadays. But to really sell it home, in Shadowbringers, uh, when you are talking with Ardbert, who is a reflection of the Warrior of Light, he's basically an alternate version of you, you hear the theme again in this, like, kind of somber, sad version of the theme. It's the same theme, because oftentimes, whenever you're talking with Artbert, it's like you're having a conversation with yourself, and you usually have it in this room. Yeah, so repeated representations of stuff is like this. What about lyrics? We're all at an anime convention. We all know how to be edgy and, and what edgy stuff is, and we don't care, right? So let's talk about Isale slash Shiva. Yes. Yeah, yes. I know. Yes. Ice queen. So, when Isale was young, she nearly died in the snow of cold before being saved by people who basically sympathize with dragons. And when she was, she saw a vision that she was a reincarnation of an ancient person named Saint Shiva. And as a result, she feels as though that it is her purpose to bring an end to the Dragon Song War as Shiva would, because Shiva really likes dragons, maybe a little bit too much. <laughs> and so whenever we fight Shiva, uh, before we even learn who Isale is or her backstory, the song that plays when we fight her basically tells us this through its lyrics. <sighs> It also just sounds really good. So before we've even learned anything about her, before she gives her exposition about who she is, where she comes from, it's already telling us she nearly died before she got here. Like, she was facing death. And then we hear a little bit more of it. So, she feels as though, because she is a reincarnation of Shiva, this path, this path is not hers. This is somebody else. Imagine if you woke up one day and you were like, oh my god, I have all of Jesus' memories. <laughs> That's basically what she's going through. Is she her own person? Is she the Saint Shiva from a thousand years ago? She can't figure it out, but she knows that she feels as though she has unfinished business in this world and can't really move on until she does it. And I know, that's very, very edgy. Uh, but I mean, sometimes edgy lyrics mean something uh, kind of tragic, and sometimes tragic things can sound edgy when you put into song. Uh, but it's just so genius how they were able to put 
her entire story in this one song, even before the expansion starts. The only instance you've had interacting with her is this fight. So let's talk about Minfilia slash Reem. Minfilia, the blonde girl on the left, uh, is similarly kind of a reincarnation of a long line of Minfilias. Think Avatar, like from The Last Airbender, uh, where she has the powers and capabilities and subtle memories of previous incarnations of herself, but not quite. She's kind of still her own person. Until uh, partway through Shadowbringers, she becomes her own person and drops the name of Minfilia and gains the name Reed, essentially becoming her own person. And she constantly, throughout the story, feels the need to prove herself, that she's capable. She's a capable young woman who has powers of her own that doesn't need to rely on others or this Minfilia power in order to do what she needs to do, and constantly goes through that struggle. And through a convoluted mess of story, she has to take on this form of Shiva in order to save the world from some kind of nonsense power. Uh, and basically, she has to become Shiva and she loses a bit of control and starts to believe that she is Shiva, just like Izael, and then you have to fight her and stuff. But what I really love is the lyrics in this song tell that story as well. So once again, it is telling the same story of Izael being lost in the snow, nearly freezing to death, and getting those memories and feeling as though she can't move on until her job is done as Saint Shiva. But then we hear these lyrics. How long have I waited to open my wings? It's telling about how Reen longs to prove herself as a capable person regardless of her reincarnations of Minfilia and gaining her power. She wants to prove herself that she is capable by herself. And then we hear this. This is Reen basically telling the story of Reen's struggle being reincarnated as Minfilia over and over and over again to fight the Sin Eaters, to fight these battles that aren't hers in this constant struggle being reincarnated and how she's tired. She's tired of the soul and all that stuff, just constantly being put this responsibility to save the world despite just being a kid. And also, there's some more repeated light motifs in both these songs as well. If you have a good ear, you can hear them being recomposed in both versions of the Shiva fights. <laughs> Or maybe the curtains are just blue. I don't know. <laughs> I may be reading way too deep into this and just drawing conclusions where there weren't any symbolism meant, but there's hard, it's, a, it's hard to know that unless they explicitly say it. I think it's pretty neat and it's fun to, to figure out. Um, but this is just scratching the surface of how, so, how deep some of this goes. So I need you to bear with me a moment because I'm gonna, I'm gonna sound like a crazy person with this next example, this final example, because this made me want to do this panel with how much this blew my mind. So, in uh, one of the more recent patches, you get to fight the gods, known as the Twelve. You know, the Twelve gods that rule over Eorzea and the major pantheon that most people pray to in their religion. And I heard this. Yeah. 
And I was like, where have I heard that before? That sounds so familiar. And it took me so long scouring throughout the entire game. I, I flew to basically every single area and like did almost every dungeon and trial trying to find where the hell have I heard this before? And you hear it in Azzy's Law. <laughs> So, you also hear it during the fight between Omega, the Alligan creation, and Shinryo, big angry dragon that wants to destroy the world. And you hear it again. You hear it actually twice in this one version with the winds, and you hear it again with another instrument that I don't remember later on in the fight. It's a trumpet. So, what do the Alligans have to do with the Twelve? Why, why, why is this ancient civilization's theme having to do with Omega and Azizla, the city they built? What does that have to do with this religious figure, this pantheon? Almost nothing, right? So first, I'm gonna lay the foundations. Let's talk about the 12. Menfina is the goddess of the moon, right? And she has a little moon pup named Dalavan. And that's just part of the mythology that these people know. It's like, Eorzea has two moons, a white moon and a red moon. The white moon is Menfina, the red moon is Dalavan. And uh, there's an inter interpretation of her here. That's her and her little doggy. He's such a good boy. <laughs> but the thing is, Dalavan, the red moon, we discover is not a real moon. It's actually an elegant creation, which is why it destroyed the world, as most elegant creations do. <laughs> so let's talk about the elegants. The elegants are an ancient civilization. Think like the Protheans from Mass Effect or Forerunners from Halo or what have you, exchangeable with any other advanced, ancient, dead, extinct civilization. And they built a bunch of stuff. Whenever you see sci-fi stuff in Final Fantasy, it's usually the Alligans. It's a running joke that any conspiracy that happens, it's usually the Alligans' fault. <laughs> Everything, just like trash here. Oh, there's a world-destroying device here. There's some random spaceship here. It's the Alligans. It's always the Alligans. But again, what do the Alligans have to do with the Twelve? Well, one of the Twelve, Menfina, has a dog named Dalamud, and Dalamud is a moon built by the elegants. So of course, when attributing that to each other, that's why you hear this theme that plays in an elegant city, in a, in a fight where you fight the Twelve, where one of the main characters that you fight is Menfina, who has a dog named Dalaman. And I finally made that connection and I just, I just, I just, I was like, of course, it's not just thrown in there for no reason. So basically, Sokin is a genius, and we should all thank him uh, for making, making amazing music that has meaning more than just having a nice tune to listen to which it also is. And that's basically it. And the last thing that I wanted to leave off with is not a story in the game, but a story of the game. Because the most recent raids are about the Twelve, and you can't get much bigger than the gods, right? But there's a very specific theme that plays that makes me feel like this raid is a celebration of the game as a whole, and the 10 years that it's come through. Because the theme that plays in it is the same theme that plays in the trailer for A Realm Reborn, which basically rebooted the game and allowed it to be good after the horrible launch of 1.0. And it, here, just have a listen. This is a raid that happened 10 years after that trailer. And it's 
the same motif. And this next part is actually my favorite part because it's the part of the trailer that really swells up with a lot of emotion. It was nice to hear it in the rain. But yeah, that's uh, how Final Fantasy tells stories through its music, and that is the panel. Thank you guys for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. But yeah, I hope you have a wonderful con. Uh, you may go. <laughs>